You're tuned into the multi choice disky challenge. The first quarter of the season is done and dusted, and after a riveting run, last year's runners up, Mamelo de Sundowns, are comfortably seated at the summit of the log. A short pause for the game, however, is by no means a pause of all things MDC. We're still going strong. Here's today's lineup. Coming up, the MDC coaches attend an eye opening leadership workshop. The MDC interns are given the tools for success in their own leadership workshop. And Jabu Matlangu conducts activations at his hometown of Davidton. Representing all 16 teams, the Multi-Choice Disky Challenge coaches came together for the 2015 Coaches Workshop, which took place at the new state-of-the-art Multi-Choice head office in Randburg. The event included international and local speakers and covered a range of topics from leadership to productivity and planning. They are coaches because they have a big challenge in this country. Uh, there's discussions on why don't we employ South African coaches. So it's important for us to produce players and coaches that are well equipped because the level is changing. Uh, so that when you engage somebody in a discussion, don't think it's just another supporter. The man is well informed. They're coming to be empowered to say, maybe that's it that we did not do right. Uh, now we know now. Because the foundation starts here with the team that we are engaged in. Where you put the right system, the right value system, uh, the right understanding, you know, the right psychology to prepare the player to understand. To say, once you are playing football, there are other responsibilities that you must deal with on your way. So we are trying to develop a complete player. Taking on the important role of coaching right in the glare of the media is quite a challenge. Who best to give the coaches pointers on how to manage the media than Supersport presenter Neil Andrews. So what I was doing here today is I've got a dual purpose. I was actually introducing the guest speakers. Um, we've had some fascinating ones. But also myself giving a talk on managing the media, which is basically trying to inform some of the coaches how they should or shouldn't react to the media because in today's day and age the world that we live in isn't the same world 20 years ago or even 20 hours ago or even 20 minutes ago because it's ever changing with social media and so just trying to give an insight to the coaches as to how they can protect themselves and also their players when dealing with the media. A familiar face to the multi-choice disky challenge, Gerard Neikamp of Dutch side Peck Zwolle outlined the traits of a good coach. A good coach means experience time, so he has to, uh, uh, to develop himself in all uh, different issues. Uh, I think the workshop is pointing all uh, the issues uh, about the technical development and also about the insights, uh, but also about uh, career planning about uh, the mental skills of players but also about coaches so i think that makes a good coach but most of all the most important thing is experience time and you cannot from uh, one day be, be a football player professional football player the next day become Mourinho or louis van gaal uh, the best coach of the world it was very positive a very open discussion uh, in, in, with my experience, I know a little bit about the issues uh, there is in this uh, country. Uh, 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 there is a challenge from uh, seeing the, the Football Association as a friend uh, who's helping, guiding a manual, a structure and philosophy where uh, clubs can identify them with uh, the responsibility to take how to develop coaches how to teach coaches and bring it back to clubs. I think that discussion was very uh, uh, positive uh, and it means that everyone is very involved to bring the football in South Africa to a next level. The workshop was a seasoned platform of interaction and knowledge exchange. Let's hear more about the experience from the horses' mouths. One of the first topics today is about the leadership. 
And this is what we need to emphasize to the player, to know the player, uh, to share with the players, because it's not only about football. But I'm happy to be part of the, this great multi-choice disque challenge. No congratulations to PSL and to congratulations to multi-choice for this initiative. And I hope that every year we can improve more and more. Uh, last year we played almost eight games a night. This year we will play a, around 15 games. And I hope the next season it can be both round, you know, to have more competitive and more duration of the competition. But it's a fantastic uh, competition. The crowd is waiting. Players see for television, the family. I think it's a fantastic occasion for the players. No, it's quite good. Uh, sharing ideas, you know, um, football, uh, communication skills, you know, uh, problems that we encounter about uh, pers different personalities that uh, uh, we, we, we involve with, you know, uh, interacting with the coaches and other ex players, you know, mm. having people who are experienced, you know, to share, you know, uh, communication skills, you know, uh, with individuals, you know and uh, the judgment of personalities so that we'll be able to communicate better because uh, uh, players are not the same, they come from different backgrounds, you know, uh, different education, you know, uh, different lifestyles. So you have to work with all these kind of different kinds of personalities. The workshop left the coaches well equipped to put their best foot forward. As we buckle up for round two of the Disky Challenge, we hold only high expectations. The multi-choice Disky Challenge burst onto the local scene bearing life-changing opportunities for a number of interns, enabling them to learn and experience the different facets of television. They recently attended a workshop that further equipped them with the skills necessary to survive in this very tough industry. These lessons are leadership lessons, planning lessons, recruitment lessons, and hopefully you're going to take some tools and nuggets with you when you leave here. So wherever you go in your career or your direction you take, these are going to be very valuable principles for you to, to use. Nothing's just going to come easy, and uh, hard work's going to be key to it. And that's why these kind of workshops and these kind of things we do are about building those building blocks, understanding the elements we need to improve and get better. Having been part of the internship program for a year now, it's only fitting that we check in on the progress of the hands behind the MDC eruption. Today's workshop has been a good refresher of things that we've learned throughout the internship. So we know about self-mastery, perfecting your skill, and um, also making sure that you use aspects like leadership, planning, recruitment, and aspects of your job. Knowing who to speak to with what issues, knowing what to do, knowing how to conduct yourself as a, as a, a member of a team. All of these aspects are things that I've taken back from this work workshop. So grateful for this workshop because I feel like some of us needed to hear it. My first half of the season wasn't, I'm not, I'm happy about the first half of the MTC. However, I'm not entirely happy about my performance because I feel like there's so much I could have done better. So this workshop has indeed helped us in terms of, you know, inspiration, you know, and I think it, it's all, it also for, forms part of a team building, you know, with everyone, because everyone is here, our production team, camera guys and everyone. So it's been it's been a great day so far. I've learned so much, you know, Ashley and Gabby, yeah, they're always helpful. And it was, it's been a great morning, very motivated and looking forward for next season. Work ethic is number one. To be the best, you need to put in a lot of work. You need to, you need to be addicted um, to the process of getting better. And pressure makes us. It's great to work under great conditions, but the true, um, the true artists or the true great uh, people are people who can make it work under not so good conditions. So that's what I picked up the most from this uh, workshop. This program has been a great learning and growth experience for the interns, who are well on their way to becoming tomorrow's star professionals. More electrifying MDC action awaits you as we wrap up a gripping first quarter. Stay tuned. Multi-choice disky challenge. Multi-choice disky challenge. Hashtag Asizali. Multi-choice disky challenge. Hashtag Asizali. Hashtag Asizali. Hashtag Asizali. Welcome.
welcome back. You're still tuned in to the multi-choice Disky Challenge. Here's a quick recap of the first half. The MDC coaches attended a leadership workshop and the MDC interns were briefed on how to conduct themselves in their profession. In true multi-choice Disky Challenge fashion, and perhaps with a bit of added spice, our beloved ambassador, Jabu Masangu, took to the streets of his hometown of Davidson to get residents hyped up about the thrilling Reserve League action. <laughs> No, it's such a great thing. Like Navantu Banga Pabang exposed like Guma Gumasoka games with by stadium. At least was a totally chance whereas put it go free. At least like exposure for Aban Yabantu Aba Nyako informed in the store. The multi-choice disky challenge has certainly added a distinct flavor to local football fandom. As this exhilarating football chapter continues to unfold, simply grab yourself a ticket and cheer, dance and chant for the love of the game. The home sweet home tune rang energetically in Jabu's ear as the multi-choice disky challenge landed in Davidson for the captivating Sinaba clashes. I'd like to thank uh, Multi-Choice and the PSL, you know, for giving uh, uh, Daviton community the opportunity, you know, to have uh, the Multi-Choice Disc Challenge Games, you know. But for me personally, it's, 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 an, it's an honor to be part of this day. And also it's, it's emotional because I, I used to play in this field when I was still very uh, small before I even uh, played professionally. This is where I grew up. I spent all my weekends to play every week in this game, in this crowd, before it, uh, it was running. Renovated. I scored so many goals here. I've made so many shibobos in this stadium. And the crowd knows me very well from this stadium. And when they see me, they can also, you know, I, I also bring back those days when I used to play here. So it's very an awesome, awesome experience to be uh, uh, today that the games are here at Snaba Stadium. I met with Uchabu when he was doing grade nine, which was standard seven then. I think it was in 1994. I taught him English. I was not a principal then, I was an English teacher. The young energetic boy he was, who was always running around, that is when his talent was noticed or identified by our soccer coaches at school. He was this kind of a boy that we sent around, actually. Jabu ran to school, to, to, to the shops, ran to where, here and there, and he was this kind of a boy. And his soccer talent was noticed in the soccer pitch because he played from um, the under 16s up until our big team. A role model and football icon in his own right, it comes as no surprise that Jabu is highly esteemed in the Davidson community. <laughs> It's wonderful to have a, uh, an ambassador like uh, Chabu Matlangu because he's from Daviton and most of the youngsters looked up to him when he was still playing. Uh, I even looked up at him when he was still playing, although I didn't... Uh, uh, reach his potential, but it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful for the community. As one of the recognized faces of the multi-choice Disky Challenge, who's also enjoyed notable success in his football career, Jabu serves as a major inspiration. Twilight. Twilight. 
And now, we zoom into the nail-biting action that took place at Sinaba Stadium. It can only be the multi-choice Disky Challenge. Well, the form book suggests that Mamelodi Sundowns are destined to take all three points back to the nation's capital come the end of 90 minutes at the Sanaba Stadium. More of Mamelodi Sundowns is certainly something that we look forward to every single weekend. They've been in excellent form so far. In fact, they do come into the game on the back of uh, four straight league wins, which has seen them rise from sixth position to second position in the space of only a month. And that bodes well for the players as Ajax Cape Town come through early. And uh, a shot there from Isigo Elangwe. Shows great straight to later for Kale. And Ajax Cape Town have opened the scoring. It's taken them only seven minutes. Franklin Kale drafted into the team. It was all about that run from Langwe and the strength that he showed and then the presence of mind to set up his strike partner. Oh, a, tries a little one-touch pass and plays his team into danger. Franklin Kale. Does he have options? Will he go it alone? He does go it alone! Franklin Kale, well, it's taken him less than 14 minutes to grab himself a brace and he's proven to be instrumental in this amazing Ajax start of the game. A lot of these men from the Ajax Academy, it's the story of this team, they like to, to build them up together, they come up together as a unit, blooding them young in a competition such as this. You see a array of 16 year olds, sometimes deliver it, and it's an interesting one there, it uh, sneaks in. At the far post, whether that was the intention or not, Kyle Shozi has picked up his second goal in three weeks. And here we go, another chance for Ajax. They remain on side. And it's as easy as they can. But Langway has committed. Well, it's a mistake that you just cannot excuse here. He was in an offside position. And he chooses to put the ball in the back of the net when the man who created it all could easily have done it himself. And here we go, Mamelodi Sundowns out of pretty much nothing, a mistake from Ajax Cape Town. And uh, it is the captain putting in a captain shift. Matisha gets the goal, which draws Mamelodi Sundown's level. It's not quite enough to take them top of the table, but David Notuani will ask them to put the, the pedal to the middle and just make sure that they push on from this, use the momentum, and perhaps get the win. Sundown's still going. It is the captain, Matisha, possibly spurred on by his goal. Delivers a great ball in. Johnson lets it drop on the wall. Johnson has committed a horrible mistake here, yeah, and Samuel Genius laps it up. Mamelodi Sundowns, in the space of a few minutes, have turned this game on its head. Perhaps the fans knew something we didn't know. They were still smiling, even when their team was behind. And here they see them in the lead. Indication plan with those three goals that have conceded here. 15 goals that have conceded. Now a real chance here. Yeah. Played in and it's an own goal. Well, he did everything he could to try and prevent Kylie Feshozi from getting himself onto the score sheet for a second time. But it has been Kamizu has been uh, not too bad in this game. And that eventually will be the the man whose name goes onto the score sheet, it will be credited to him as an own goal. Very unfortunate, but he had to do everything he could to keep out short. Disha, captain for today. Well, Abraham Mashala calls an end to this game, and Mamalodi Sundowns will take three points back to Pretoria. It means that, at least for the time being, they move to the top of the multi-choice Disky Challenge standings. It all comes down to the impact that Kyalith de Shozi had on this game as Mamelodi Sundowns triumph by four goals to two over Ajax Cape Town. Well, well, welcome to another helping of this enthralling thriller. That is a multi-choice Disky Challenge 2.0.
Blazers, Golden Arrows, the Trail Blazers, the new kids on the block, who find themselves looking to consolidate their position. Fizzlem Kroppe gets us underway. Abu Fanabas turned the team in gold. And with a tinge of green attacking the goals from left to right. The Sea Robbers, the London Pirates in red attacking from a right to left. Nice little one to Makabu now. Leaning back a bit too much. Apologizes. Now here comes Golden Arrows. It's Busi back up. Lovely little play. Hits the ball. Shows good skill. Ball in to Makabu. It's a ball to get a fist touch on. It's quite a difficult finish to execute in the end. He tries to improvise something here with his uh, back to goal. And here comes Pirates. He comes up, does well. Get the ball to Mukasi. Beats his man easily, shuts him off, takes a shot. Cut attempt from Moses Mukasi. Personal chins have changed again. That change nearly worked last time it was Caleb. This time it's set. Here come Golden Arrows at Andy Lefigasolo, the 21 year old from Nanda. Takes a shot. Pomolomi Kong spilled there. Golden Arrows with that becoming the third draw of the season. The game ending 0 0 here at the Sinawa Stadium. Six goals in two past 18 games on day one here at the Sanaba Stadium. 24 hours later, we added again a different environment, a new challenge. But the mission remains the same for today's teams. That is Tomo Cosmos and Pista Stars. We at the Sanaba Stadium, 20,000 seater. Yesterday, it was absolutely pumping. We expect much of the same. Jim Thompson, all seems to be following him. The early stages. Keeper there, making a hash of things. Lovely control there, but Sibanyoni turns his man. Burst of pace away. Approaching goal. Sibanyoni. He's touched at him down in the end. Did so well to turn his man and show his power, show a bit of pace. Fortunately, a bit of finesse when needed. A bit of composure. The comes in Kosi. Rinko who puts a ball in. Tabamaya there does well to keep it in. Pick up the pieces. Tries to turn his man, wriggles his way. Good ball in. Goodness. Let's just hit the ball. Easily losing out, rather. Bites back at Mulepo. Tries to play a neat one, two. So low. Rudy can catch up. Can you see my Sela? We've seen him on several occasions with his back to goal and been able to turn his man and face the goal. Now here come Vista Stars. Luna Corsa. Finally an opportunity for Vista Stars. And finally we have a goal here. Looks to the heavens above. He says thank you. His coach will thank him for that. As referee see from a bear that calls an end. To this game, it was Muslim Zizi Batista. Was a prolific figure on the left hand side. Clement Ramakasha, Jomo Cosmos keeper, has had an afternoon to forget. Quite a tight affair, we predicted it. We stay stars, nick it in the end with a goal from Lunga Lokosa in the 79th minute to settle things. Get interactive and share your opinions, highlights, and predictions on these social media platforms. Prepare to feel the rumble of great football when the Multi-Choice Disky Challenge returns in January. The games will kick off with Ajax Cape Town against Free State Stars at Khalishiwi Stadium. And then it's Gauteng versus Northwest as the Buccaneers take on Diguena. PSL returnees Joma Cosmos and Golden Arrows face off at Kingswellitini Stadium. 
and the clever boys lock horns with Amakosi at Khalishiwi Stadium. Bloemfontein Celtic battle platinum stars at Cesar Ramabodu Stadium. Chipper United and Golden Arrows go head to head at Wolfson Stadium. And finally, it's Free State Stars against the Bucks in a wildly anticipated battle. Don't miss it. That's it from the multi-choice Disky Challenge for this week. Stick with us as we bring you the best of Reserve League football, one kick at a time. Until we meet again, hashtag Asizali. Voilà.